Hey grasshoppers. So we are on chapter 30 of Willy of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, who owns the chocolate factory? It's Willy Wonka, right? It's Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. But the title of this chapter is Charlie's Chocolate Factory. So what do you predict might happen in this chapter? The end of the book, what do you think predict might happen in this chapter? Hmm, have a little think. I know my prediction. I wonder if the chocolate factory is gonna become Charlie's. Let's find out. The great glass lift was now hovering high over the town. Inside the lift stood Mr. Wonka, Grandpa Joe and little Charlie. How I love my chocolate factory, said Mr. Wonka, gazing down. Then he paused and he turned around and looked at Charlie with a most serious expression. Do you love it too, Charlie? he asked. Oh yes, cried Charlie. I think it's the most wonderful place in the whole world. I am very pleased to hear you say that, said Mr. Wonka, looking more serious than ever. He went on staring at Charlie. Yes, he said, I am very pleased indeed to hear you say that. And now I shall tell you why. Mr. Wonka cocked his head to one side and all at once the tiny twinkling wrinkles of a smile appeared in the corner of his eyes and he said, you see my dear boy, I have decided to make you a present of the whole place. As soon as you are old enough to run it, the entire factory will become yours. Charlie stared at Mr. Wonka. Grandpa Joe opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. It's quite true, said Mr. Wonka, smiling broadly now. How big a smile do you think Mr. Wonka's got on his face? Can you show me? Big, broad smile. I really am giving it to you. That's all right, isn't it? Giving it to him, gasped Grandpa Joe. You must be joking. I am not joking, sir. I am deadly serious. But, but, why should you want to give your factory to little Charlie? Listen, Mr. Wonka said, I am an old man. I'm much older than you think. I can't go on forever. I've got no children of my own, no family at all. So who is going to run the factory when I get too old to do it myself? Someone's got to keep it going. If only for the sake of the Oompa Loompas, mind you. There are, if only for the sake of the Oompa Loompas. Mind you, there are thousands of clever men who would give anything for the chance to come in and take over from me. But I don't want that sort of person. I don't want a grown up person at all. A grown up won't listen to me. He won't learn. He will try to do things his own way and not mine. So I have to have a child. I want a good, sensible, loving child, one to whom I can tell all my most precious sweet-making secrets while I am still alive. So that is why you sent out the golden tickets, cried Charlie. Exactly, cried Mr. Wonka. I decided to invite five children to the factory, and the one I liked the best at the end of the day would be the winner. But Mr. Wonka, stammered Grandpa Joe, do you really and truly mean that you were giving the whole of this enormous factory to little Charlie? After all, there's no time for arguments, cried Mr. Wonka. We must go at once and fetch the rest of the family, Charlie's father and his mother and anyone else that's around. They can all live in the factory from now on. They can all help run it until Charlie is old enough to do it by himself. Where do you live, Charlie? Charlie, what do you think Charlie's thinking right now? Mr. Wonka has just told him that he is going to give him his entire chocolate factory. What would you be thinking if I had just, if someone had just told you that you were gonna get a chocolate factory? I think I'd be quite excited. Maybe a bit overwhelmed, a bit like shocked. Charlie peered down through the glass of the door. Sorry, let me start again. Charlie peered down through the glass floor and the snow covered, at the snow covered houses that lay below. It's over there, he said, pointing. It's that little cottage right on the edge of the town, the 
tiny little one. I see it, cried Mr. Wonka, and he pressed some more buttons and the lift shot down towards Charlie's house. I'm afraid my mother won't come with us, Charlie said sadly. Why ever not? Because she won't leave Grandma Josephine and Grandma Georgina and Grandpa George. Ah, oh, but they must come too. They can't, Charlie said. They're very old and they haven't been out of bed in 20 years. Then we'll take the bed along as well with them in it, said Mr. Wonka. There's plenty of room in this lift for a bed. You couldn't get the lift out of the house. You couldn't get the bed out of the house, said Grandpa Joe. It won't go through the door. You mustn't despair, cried Mr. Wonka. Nothing is impossible. You watch. The lift was now hovering over the roof of the bucket's little house. What are you going to do, cried Charlie. I'm going right in to fetch them, said Mr. Wonka. How? asked Grandpa Joe. How's he going to go in in the glass lift into the house? Through the roof, said Mr. Wonka, pressing another button. No, shouted Charlie. Stop, shouted Grandpa Joe. Crash, went the lift, right down through the roof of the house into the old people's bedroom. Showers of dust and broken tiles and bits of wood and cockroaches and spiders and bricks and cement went raining down on the three old ones who were lying in the bed. And each of them thought that the end of the world had come. Grandma Georgina fainted. Grandma Josephine dropped her false teeth. Grandpa jo George put his head under the blanket. And Mr. and Mrs. Bucket came rushing in from the next room. Save us, cried Grandma Josephine. Calm yourself, my darling wife, said Grandpa Joe, stepping out of the lift. It's only us. Mother, cried Charlie, rushing into Mrs. Bucket's arms. Mother, mother, listen to what's happened. We're all going back to live in Mr. Wonka's factory, and we're all going to help him run it, and he's going to give it all to me, and, and, and. What are you talking about, said Mrs. Bucket. Just look at our house. Just, uh, just look at our house, cried poor Mr. Bucket. It's in ruins. This is Charlie running to his mother. This is Grandpa Joe. He's smiling because he knows that it's good news. And then one of the grandmas is not looking so happy because she's just thinking, why on earth has a whole lift just crashed through our house and destroyed our house? She doesn't know she can go and live in his factory. But she is stressed out, I'm guessing. My dear sir, said Mr. Wonka, jumping forward and shaking Mr. Bucket warmly by the hand. I'm so very glad to meet you. <clears throat> you mustn't worry about your house. From now on, you're never going to need it again anyway. Who is this crazy man? screamed Grandma Josephine. He could have killed us all. This, said Grandpa Joe, is Mr. Willy Wonka himself. It took quite a time for Grandpa Joe and Charlie to explain to everyone exactly what they had been happening, what had been happening to them all day. And even then, they all refused to ride back to the factory in the lift. I'd rather die in my bed, shouted Grandma Josephine. So would I, cried Grandma Georgina. I refuse to go, said, announced Grandpa George. So Mr. Wonka and Grandpa Joe and Charlie, taking no notice of their screams, simply pushed the bed into the lift. They pushed Mr. and Mrs. Bucket in after it, then they got in themselves. Mr. Wonka pressed the button, the doors closed, Grandma Georgina screamed, the lift rose up off the floor and shot through the hole in the roof and out into the open sky. So they had no choice. Charlie climbed onto the bed and tried to calm the three old people who were still petrified with fear. Please don't be frightened, he said. It's quite safe. And we're going to do the most, we're going to go to the most wonderful place in the world. Charlie's right, said Grandpa Joe. Will there be anything to eat when we get there? Asked Grandma Josephine. I'm starving. The whole family is starving. Anything to eat, cried, uh, cried Charlie laughing. Oh, just you wait and see. And that is the end of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. What was Grandma Josephine going to be able to eat when she got to the factory? She's going to be able to eat some gobstoppers, some like never ending chewing gum, some chocolate that was made smaller in the TV. What else, what else are they going to be able to eat in the chocolate factory? If you want to put a comment below, you can. That was the end of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I really, really enjoyed that year too. 
I hope you did too. Um, we'll have to see what we read tomorrow. Do you want me to carry on reading to you? You can, you can send me an email about that. Send me a comment. If you think I should keep reading, you let me know. Okay. Bye, grasshoppers. <laughs>